Hey, everybody. Okay, so um, number one, I just need to start this off by saying so that I have proof. I'm kid free and husband free and I'm down a dog. So like, this is a good day. And I'm down a dog because she's at the groomers. Don't think like friendship. Um, anyway, so this video is strictly MLA. I suggest that you attempt to save this or bookmark it or something um, for when you have questions that I potentially go over instead of shooting me a text through the group chat or what have you. Um, it is going to be a fairly lengthy video. I do apologize, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, okay, so before we get started, I normally would ask like, Anybody heard of MLA? You probably have, and you didn't know it. Um, so anytime that somebody says, you know, 12 point font times New Roman, um, one inch margins all around, double spaced, yeah, that's MLA in a nutshell. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm gonna go over a few things because you guys are gonna have a quiz this Friday, the 16th. It will be open for 24 hours, 24 hours only. Um, I do, if you, have a conflict with this, please let me know. Otherwise, mm, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to take this quiz on Friday night. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. So let's jump right in. Um, all of these documents that I'm going over have been emailed to you. They were emailed to you either Wednesday or Thursday of this week. I can't remember which day I did it. Actually, I'll find out right now. I sent it on Wednesday. Okay, so all of these things should be in your email address or your inbox. More coffee is clearly needed. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go over everything. The first thing we're going to go over is probably the MLA document boot camp. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You guys should be able to see it. <clears throat> so the first things that we're gonna go over are summarizing and paraphrasing. Summarizing and paraphrasing are very similar. Now, paraphrasing is when you take somebody else's ideas or words and you reword them so that they're your own words, okay? That's fine, that's cool, I encourage this. However, if it is not your idea, you need to cite it, okay? So even when we're paraphrasing, that means even when we are rewording things into our own words, because it is not your idea, you need to put a citation at the end, okay? Summarizing, same thing. Summarizing is more for like an entire book or an entire movie. You know, if I ask you what, the, what a movie was about, you're gonna summarize it, okay? Um, when you summarize, it's typically, let's just pretend about a paragraph law, okay? So, you do not put the citation at the end of the paragraph. The citation has to go after every sentence that you are summarizing from whatever it is, the story, the movie, the whatever, okay? Because you are telling something that you saw or that you read. So something that is not yours. So you have to provide that citation, okay? So paraphrasing is for one line of something. Summarizing is for an entire something. <laughs> Um, entire book, entire movie, entire song, okay? Paraphrasing is when it's usually just one or two lines that you're rewording into your own words, okay? <clears throat> now, with that obviously comes quoting, yay! I'm trying to be enthusiastic about this because it's not a fun topic. Um, so quoting, number one, quotation marks, quotation marks, quotation marks, okay? Remember the quotation marks. Um, this is when you are taking the exact words. You are not rephrasing, you are not doing anything. You are taking it copy paste, okay? You have to throw quotes around it. Otherwise it's plagiarism, okay? Um, and then of course you have to provide your citation, okay? Always cite, when in doubt, cite, okay? The next thing that we're gonna take a look at, we're right here now, inline citations, okay? So inline citations means that it's quite, it quite literally is in line with the text. Okay, so there's two different forms of inline citations. There's the parenthetical, the kind that goes in parentheses, or there's the kind that you state in the sentence. Okay, so here is my example. Okay, so first one is she spent this time composing nearly 1100 poems. Okay, you'll notice my quotation marks 
because I took this directly from something from biography. That's my citation. Okay. Now that was obviously, maybe not so obvious. Um, that was from a website. So there's no page number. It's just the site. Okay. Um, also the period goes, oopsies. From here, computer, right there, on the outside of the closing parentheses. Always. Anyway. Okay, so the next one has a book or an article with the page number. Okay, so during these moments, she was often marveling at life's and death's stupendousness, stu da -da 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 -da, stupendedness, <clears throat> marveling that death makes life feel mightier. Oh my God, I can't read today. McNaughton 204. Okay, so McNaughton 204 is a citation itself, parenthetical again. Now, I could have written it as this, according to McNaughton. She often life's Stupendous, stupendid, stupendous, fuck. Sorry guys, I'm a little stupid today. Okay, um, we'll just end it there and then we're just gonna put the page number. Let's see if my computer wants to work. Shit, sorry, I'm trying to do better. Okay, so that's another way that you can do it. Okay, um, keep in mind though that when we are citing a page number, there is no need to put the word page, P, PG, PP, none of that, okay? You are also not putting the publication year. That is APA or Chicago. I don't really know because I don't care because it's not MLA and all that I ever have to be concerned with is MLA and I'm sorry that sounded mean, <laughs> okay? So please do not put PG, P, I will strike them off. I will do whatever I need to do, okay? So moving on to some general hints, there is no organiza organizational flow to this paper. It was just kind of how I thought things when I wrote it. Um, so I do apologize for that. So MLA will always mean 12 point font, Times New Roman, double spaced. If that means that your heading is double spaced, that's your name, my name, the date, the assignment. Okay, that's your heading. That's also double spaced. Okay, your work cited, double spaced. Um, the next one right here now. Cite everything, just when in doubt, cite it out, okay? So cite all of your quotes, cite all of your paraphrases. If it is not common knowledge, it needs to be cited, okay? If it is not common knowledge, like we stop at a red traffic light, that's common knowledge, don't cite that, okay? But if it's, you know, um, New Jersey has jug handles for left-hand turns, People out in Wyoming might not know that. So you might have to cite where you found that information. I don't know, I'm just thinking of random things. Um, okay, the next bullet point says to use signal phrases. What this means is that you are introducing your quote and we're gonna get to that in a minute with the PowerPoint. Um, so you have to introduce it. So if we scroll back up real fast right here, where I say, according to McNaught and she often, that is introducing your quote. That is a signal phrase, okay? It's, you're not just putting a quote in to stand alone as its own sentence. You have to introduce quotes, okay? Think of, think of your quotations as a friend you're bringing to a party. This friend doesn't know anybody, okay? But you wanted to go to this party. You didn't wanna go alone. Your friends said they'd go with you, okay? So you walk in the door and the first thing that you do is you introduce your friend to some of your other friends, okay? You don't just leave them and be like, peace out, bye. See ya, see you at the end, okay? You introduce them to people. So think of it in that same instance. You're introducing the quote, okay? Every quote has to be introduced. Every single quote must be introduced. I'm gonna say that about 15 more times during this video. You want to avoid those drop quotes or floating quotes. Um, okay, I give you guys some examples here. You guys can read, no worries. <laughs> I'm not gonna read everything to you. Um, 
this obviously I send it in an email so that you have it as a reference so that you can use it. It's available on Blackboard as well. Okay, the next bullet point is another very important one. We're right here, okay, right here. Use only the parts of the quotes that are necessary and useful, okay? I understand because I have been in your shoes, the desire to use a quote that is five sentences long because it takes up space on your paper, which gets you closer to your page requirement. I get it, I do. However, the teacher will mark you off if you just throw stuff in there, okay? Now, when I say use things that are useful, it means the parts that pertain to what you're saying, okay? They need to be useful to help your argument or your counter argument. It doesn't, you know, it, either way, a good paper has both. Um, Okay, so if let's say in between, all right, so I give you here, we're gonna use our example. Okay, so here's the original quote. This play was, I have to confess, the greatest waste of time and money I have ever encountered. Okay, so that is the original quote. Now, all that I need to know, it, I don't need to know that it's, I have to confess, okay? You only have to put, this play was the greatest waste of time and money. However, to show that you omitted words, you need to put in an ellipsis or the three dots, those annoying three dots that show up on your iPhone when you're waiting for somebody to text you back, okay? And they're highlighted right here in yellow, right, right there, okay? So that, I took out the, I have to confess right there, okay? Um, incorrect is going to be this play was the greatest because that's not what he was saying at all you still have to remain true to the statement, okay? So it's a craftful art to quoting, super fun. Um, but again, remember, don't, you know, don't freak out if you think you're doing it wrong. That's part of my job is to help you guys figure this part out, okay? Um, anyway, we're gonna move on now to the next part of it. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to make sure that when you are incorporating words that you stay grammatically correct, okay? So the correct way would be that he describes it, it's active, it's an active description. So it's, he's describing it as the play is still going on, okay? Like the play is still in production, that's what I mean. Um, so the correct way would be Joe Schmo describes the play as this, okay? Not Joe Schmo about the play because what about the play? We're missing, we're clearly missing a word, okay? So we're gonna remain grammatically correct. But next is in order to maintain that grammatical correctedness, right here, guys, you are allowed to alter the quotation in a very limited way by using brackets, okay? So you'll notice when I did it up here, right here. So the quote uses the word marveling, but when I did it, I had to say that it was marveled full past tense, okay? So because I changed that, I had to throw it in brackets to show that I changed a tense to make it grammatically correct for that sentence, okay? So I'll show you again down here. Here we are, okay? Right here. So you use brackets to show that you are trying to keep it um, grammatically correct, all right? So the original is every night I creep down the stairs past my parents' bedroom door and sneak out the window. Somebody trying to break into our truck? I hope not. Okay. So Jane Brain described how she creeps down the stairs each night because she says that she's doing it every night. So it means that it is present perfect tense, um, constantly happening. Okay. So she creeps down the stairs because if we say creep, um, Jane Brain described how she creeps down the stairs, it's not right. Okay. She's doing it. So she creeps down the stairs. Okay, so we have to make sure that that subject verb agreement still is in place. Um, okay, continuing on. If we have questions, please let me know. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, okay, this is a huge part. This is on your quiz. Actually, almost everything is on your quiz. I made the quiz off of this paper. You are allowed to use all of these materials to do the quiz. I would be stupid to tell you not to. 
Okay, so for quotes that are longer than four lines of prose, this does not mean that you opened a book and it's longer than four lines in that book or on that website. It means that it is four typed, my keyboard's up here, typed lines, okay? You typed them out and you went on to a fifth line. That is what that means, okay? So if it is more than four typed lines, that quote then becomes a block quote, okay? So what that means is that you are going to take your quote, you are going to hit enter as if it was a new paragraph. You're gonna hit tab two times for that first line, okay? Two times. The left side of this quote will be indented over to that second space, okay? So here's my example, okay? So this shows one indent over, I'll show you, one indent over, one tab because that's the beginning of a new paragraph. So it says, instead of stages, McNaughton breaks down Dickinson's death poems into classes, she writes. Okay, that she writes is that signal phrase, that introduction, and now here is my block quote. So if I, un, if I unblock quote it for you guys, okay, you can see that it is clearly more than four typed lines, okay? So what you do is you take it, you hit tab, oops, two times, Okay, then you're going to go to the end of your first line, hit tab again. I don't know why it's doing it like this, but anyway, okay. I copied and pasted off of an old paper, by the way. Um, okay, so it is indented over an extra time from that beginning of the paragraph indent. I hope that wording made sense. Okay, so you have your quote. You'll notice also that there are no quotation marks. When you have a block quote, you do not need uh, quotation marks. Okay, however, you still need your citation. So this was found not on a website, it was found in a book or in a journal article. So it has a page number. So that citation goes in at the end. Remember the period goes on the outside, outside of the end, okay? If you were to put the period here, then that citation would belong to the next sentence and not to this one, okay? All right, carrying on. When introducing an author, again, I, I noticed that none of this has any organizational flow and I apologize, um, but anyway, when you introduce an author, the very first time you introduce that author, you use their full name, okay? Um, so my example is with this person, McNaughton, her full name is Ruth Flanders McNaughton. Um, okay, so the very first time, which is usually when you write, you know, um, so-and-so in their, essay or in their book, and then you, you insert the title of whatever it is, says this, okay? So my example, Ruth Flanders McNaughton pronounced in her essay, Emily Dickinson on death, that blah, 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 okay? So that's my introduction to my quote, by the way. So that first time always needs to be full name. Every time after that, okay? And that's what this bullet point is, okay? Every time after that first time with that author, it's last name only, okay? Last name only, okay? So you never will use their first name ever because it's rude. Well, I don't really know if it's because it's rude, but I'm gonna go with that, okay? I tell again, use signal phrases, okay? There's some examples. Now, this is also definitely on the quiz because this is one that people almost always get wrong. If an author is unknown, or if something has no author, okay, you are going to abbreviate the title. What I mean by abbreviate, you're going to shorten the title, take like the first two or three words for your citation, okay? You still have to cite it. So if this is the text, Old Book of Hogwash, Okay, obviously quite citing it as old book of would make no sense. So old book. Okay, so you would put old book, page 97. Oops, I don't know what I just did. Shit. Sorry. Okay, so when you are using it in the text that's not in the parentheses, as, like you're using it as your lead up, according to old book of hogwash, you'll put the whole thing. But when you're putting it in the parentheses, the parenthetical citation, you're going to abbreviate or shorten the title, okay? That's only if the author is unknown. This happens more often 
on internet articles. Um, so just be wary of that, okay? If there is no page number, then it doesn't matter. You're just citing the author's last name. Do not make up a page number. Most websites do not have page numbers, okay? The only thing that you guys are gonna encounter that has page numbers are going to be books, journal articles, maybe a magazine article. Um, yeah, I think that's it, okay? Because most internet sources do not have page numbers because you're just scrolling, okay? So don't worry about a page number if it doesn't have one. Just put the author's last name or abbreviate the title if there is no author, okay? All right, next. Citations and plagiarism. If you do not cite, you are plagiarizing. Very cut and dry on that one, okay? This kind of just goes over what plagiarism is. Most of you should know what plagiarism is. It's when you copy and paste things that are not your own words. It is when you buy a paper. It is when you say to your friend, hey, I will pay you to write my paper. That is called plagiarism. They are not your words. They are someone else's. Plagiarism, according to MLA, is also when you recycle an old paper. I don't really get that one, but I'll go with it. Um, okay, so just don't do it. I'll know, I'll catch you. I'm pretty good at it. It's sad. I have a lot of time to Google shit things. Um, so please don't, just, just don't, okay? Um, a lot of schools have tougher policies um, than RCBC. So I could, if I catch you plagiarizing, I do have the power to fail you automatically in the class, not just on the paper, but in the class, and you'll have to retake the class over again. So just don't do it. Um, my school where I went, we got expelled if we were caught plagiarizing. So like, that was a big, big old no-no for us. Um, I know many people that did it and got away with it. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, <laughs> but I also know that the technology was not in place back then when I went to school. So anyway, uh, moving on, thesis statements. Okay, thesis statements. They're gonna be found two places in your paper. It's gonna be found at the beginning and at the end, your introduction, your conclusion. In your introduction, it will typically be in the last sentence, okay? In your conclusion, it will typically be in the first few sentences because you are restating it to show how you proved it throughout your paper, okay? Your thesis statement is essentially a roadmap for your paper. It is telling the reader, this is what I'm gonna prove. So you're gonna to expect to find things to prove this point, okay? So that's the gist on the thesis statement. Now, what the first page of your paper should look like. There is no cover page. I'm gonna repeat that again. No cover page, none, no cover page. Okay, your first page should have your heading and then on every page should have your header. Okay, so your heading is your name, your professor's name, the class and assignment, and the date. Okay, and then your header is your last name with the page number. Now, if you're using Microsoft Office, like I do, you just go to insert, go over here to page number somewhere. Where the hell is it? There it is. Top of page. You find the one that has the number on the right-hand side of the page. You'll click on that. Your cursor will go in front of the number, and you'll type in your last name, and it does it to every page and then you don't have to worry about it, okay? Your heading only goes on your first page. You'll also notice the title is right there. There is no excess spaces, okay? These are double spaced. So after you hit the date, you hit enter one time. Then you hit the center button to center the title. You put your title in, you enter, you hit the left-hand margin and you start writing your paper. That's it, there's no extra spaces, okay? No extra spaces. You will get points taken off if there's excess space. Anyway, your works cited page. Okay, here's an example. You'll notice that it's on a brand new page. Okay, Freeman 8. Works cited is centered at the top of the page. And then you have your wonderful uh, entries. Okay, so something different is that your first line, this is important to know, the first line of every entry, okay, Buchanan, Kuntz, Developments, Imowitz. Mercati, okay, they're all flush against that left margin. And all subsequent lines of that entry are indented one time. This is called a hanging indent, okay? This is MLA, all right? So I do talk about that right here, okay? It also is in alphabetical order by author. 
Obviously, this one doesn't have an author, so it went by this word. If the word, the first word of the article is the or at or of or whatever, omit that, go with the second word. Okay. All right. Moving on. It is a good practice for you to write out your sources as you use them throughout your paper. You should be citing as you're typing your paper. It is very difficult to find those quotes at the end of typing and going back to put them in. That is very difficult. I do not recommend doing it that way. If that's how you write it, so be it. Um, I just think that it's easier to do them as you go because then you know that they're matching. If I find that you have a source in the body of your paper that does not match on your work cited, I will question the authenticity of your paper. Okay, that's something that goes off in my little lizard brain. Okay, um, or if you have an entry on your works cited page that is not mentioned in your paper. That's gonna to signal to me that either you left something out or you're copying from somewhere that they missed it. I don't know. Okay, so it will set off some bells for me to double check things. Um, so you are not citing sources that you read and did not use. If you did not use a source in your paper, you are not citing it. Okay, all right, so that is the end of the MLA documentation bootcamp paper. All right, I'm going to move on to something else now. Stop share. We are going to go to, we're gonna to go to the PowerPoint, okay? Because I think that just goes nicely. All right, slideshow because obviously that's way better. So embedding your quotes, yay! I know, okay? So y'all know what a quote is. Hey, this is obviously much more interactive if we were like face to face, but here we are. Um, the biggest thing here is that you're going to remember to ice it. Introduce, cite, and explain. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is attached for you guys in an email, so I don't have to actually tell you or read all of this. So you're including a quote when you provide examples and evidence. There should be many quotes in your paper, okay? You do not include a quote in your thesis statement or your topic sentences. Moving on. It should never stand alone. You're not gonna leave your friend standing at the front door, so why would you leave a quote to stand by itself, okay? Don't begin a sentence with a quote because you have to introduce it, okay? And you always, always, always need to explain the quote after you cite it, okay? So you've introduced it, you've quoted, you cited it. Now you're explaining your quote because you have to tell me why it's relevant, why it needs to be there in your paper. What are you proving by putting this quote in here? Okay, moving on. Introduce, cite, explain. Okay, there we go. Four different ways to properly and effectively introduce quotes into your paper. Complete sentence, explanatory phrase, short quotes, or a paraphrase, okay? So to show the examples, we're going to use Dr. King's um, speech, I have a dream. Okay, here we go. This is the quote we're using. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character, okay? So if we're going to introduce it with a complete sentence, it means that it could stand alone, that this sentence in particular could stand alone and has an independent dependent clause, okay? Subject verb agreement, everything's in place, but because we don't let quotes stand by themselves, we throw a comma, or a semicolon, or a colon rather, after it, and throw that quote on the end, okay? So here we go. So, in his I Have a Dream speech, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream. Now, that is a complete sentence in and of itself. She could have ended it right there, but because we have to introduce our quotes, she threw that colon there, and now there's our quote. Complete sentence, colon, okay, and our quote. You'll notice here also, where's my mouse? Okay, right here at the end, that period is tugged nicely into the quote, okay? Your period, if you do not have your parenthetical citation because you quote, you cited it at the beginning in your introduction, like according to so-and-so, you didn't have a page number, that period goes inside of the quotation mark, okay? Next one, explanatory phrase, okay? Using a comma this time. So in his famous I Have a Dream speech, Dr. King said, comma, quote, okay, explanatory phrase, punctuate with comma, quote. 
All right, next one. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Okay, short quotes in your sentence. This is kind of like paraphrasing, but not really, because unfortunately, I think with this particular quote that we're using, um, it's hard to paraphrase into different words. Okay, so this is my thing. Dr. King dreamed of a day when his children would only be judged by the content of their character. So that is the short part of the quote. Okay, it's set apart with quotation marks. Um, but it is very similar to paraphrasing. However, because we said it was in his speech, that's our quote. So it doesn't, or I rather our citation, sorry. Okay, so now paraphrasing. All right. So Dr. King dreamed of a day when his four children would, paraphrased. Okay. And then the quoted text. Okay. Fairly simple. Um, more examples for introducing according to, according to. These are um, the most common, I would say. Okay, now we're gonna cite the quote. MLA because APA is stupid. Sorry. Um, APA is very common for like science, history, even though history typically uses Chicago. Um, it really depends on your teacher and your school. Anyway, so you have your in-text, your parenthetical and your works cited page, okay? In-text is the reference to the original author or speaker embedded into the text. Um, carrying on. I don't need to read these all verbatim to you guys. Okay. Your work cited page, however, it does not start on the next line of your last paragraph. Okay. It starts on a brand new page. Okay. So if that means that you are ending the page on your, if you're ending your paper on page seven and it's only half of the page, that means you, you hit enter until you get to page eight and start your work cited page. Okay. Cool. Um, Sorry. So here is your, a template. Sorry, I'm paying attention to my neighborhood. Okay, introduce your quote, have the quote, citation, and your period goes after the citation. Sorry, this is probably the biggest thing that irks my soul. Okay, is where that period goes. Okay, so introduce your quote, quote, citation. This is all stuff that you guys can read. I don't need to read it to you. Um, we're gonna fly through that stuff, sorry. Um, it's template stuff. And at this point we have easybib.com to help us with how to properly cite. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, in text citation is something that is in the text. Okay. Your parenthetical will be the first part of the entry from the works cited page. So it's going to be your author's name. Okay. So that's the first thing that I'm going to see that it says McNaughton and I'm going to look for McNaughton on your works cited page. Okay. Period goes outside of the parentheses. Right, here's an example, okay? Now this person did not abbreviate, but they should have, okay? It should have just been research on effects or it could have been media violence because there could be multiple things that start with research on the effects, okay? So you got to kind of get creative sometimes, all right? Next, there it goes, okay, next one. Um, Levine, there it is, okay? And explaining, so like I said before, when you have your quote, you can't just leave it there, okay? You've introduced them, you've cited, you've quoted, you've cited, great, but then you just leave it. You have to explain what that quote means and what it means in relation to what you're trying to prove, okay? Otherwise, I'm left going, why'd you put this quote here if you're not going to tell me about it, okay? I need to know that you have the ability to analyze someone else's words, okay? So you can provide an analysis. You can explain why it's important. This is important because, very simple, okay? Um, make sure that it supports what you're saying. However, you can also use it to show a counter argument, okay? Keep that in mind. So this proves, this illustrates, this shows, this highlights just some examples, okay? Embedding it, okay? It must be grammatically consistent. We went over this on the documentation bootcamp, okay? Um, introduction and the quote are grammatically consistent in this particular example, okay? You can change a word to make it grammatically correct by using the brackets to omit. You're going to use ellipses, okay? Here's an example. I'm gonna let you guys look at that real fast. I'm gonna grab something. Okay. 
Okay, so next, look at that, it's the end. Okay, so now I wanna show you guys easybib.com. Super cool website if you're not already using it. Um, just bear with me. Okay, so we should be able to see my easybib.com. Okay, right here, you're going to click this, create citations. Now, there are a ton of things. So journal is a journal article that you would find in a database, okay? But you could also use online database. That is typically what you should be using is online database, okay? We're gonna go over that, I think next week when we have our library um, our reference librarian helping us. Okay, she's gonna show us how to use Academic Search Premier. Um, okay, so that's what you'll use. Online video, if you have a YouTube video that you found that you're gonna use. Um, the Bible has a very specific citation. So I highly recommend using this, um, but you can just take a look that there are quite a bit of sources you can cite from, okay? So for the example I'm gonna show you right now, we're gonna do a book. Okay, I have mine, The Hate You Give, which is our novel that we're reading. Okay, so when you have a hard copy of something, oh, look, my kid drew in it. How sweet. He's so sweet. Oh, more drawings. Okay, sorry. Okay, so if you don't have the book sleeve, like I don't, I had to take it off because my kid kept ruining it. You can turn to one of the inside pages and you'll find the ISBN number. Okay, that's that 13 digit code. Make sure that's right down here. Okay. So each code refers to which publication it was, which um, edition, so on and so forth. So I'm going to type that in because it's 10 times easier if you have that. So So there it is. Look at that right here, this top one. Okay, so that's the one I'm gonna do. I hit cite, I hit continue. Okay, now it, it's got everything filled in so that just in case there's something extra that I have to fill in, I have that ability to do it. Okay, there's no volume, no edition, no series. It was published in 2018 by Bowser and Bray. Okay, this particular one, I hit complete citation. And of course I have to watch a video. Okay, thank you. So you're just gonna hang out with me while we watch this silly thing. Alexa, where's the camera? Oh, whoops, someone's there, how sweet. So sweet, okay, I don't want this. Please leave me alone, we have 10 more seconds. Okay, and I'll show you how to do a manual citation as well. Um, as soon as this finishes up. Okay, I'm done. Okay, now, it's going to give me a list somewhere. There it is, okay? So right here, I can hit copy citation and then I can just hit control V or paste onto my actual document, done and done. Simple, easy, okay? So with that, you'll see these other two here. And that brings me to, not this, go away. <laughs> okay, we're gonna stop share. I'm gonna bring up something else. with me guys. Also not what I wanted. I don't know why this isn't working. No way. Back it. There we go. Okay. So I have included this packet for you guys. Okay. If you complete it and send me your answers, whether they are right or wrong, I will give you extra credit points on your MLA quiz. Sounds pretty good, right? So yes, it is a little lengthy, but it is worth it. It's worth the review, okay? So here it is, it's a PDF. Um, there's a few different ways you can send this back to me. If you wanna print this out, if you're capable and just write your answers on and scanning it and sending that back, cool. You're gonna do this through email, okay? All of these options include emailing the answers back to me. Excuse me, okay? So then you could also, Get a sheet of paper, 
put section one, number one, blah, 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 and write your answers down that way on a piece of paper, take a picture of it and email it to me, okay? Very simple stuff, right? Or you could just type it into the body of an email. Very easy, okay? That is how you can get me those answers. And then I will give you the extra credit on um, your MLA quiz. It is going to be an extra five points, 100% worth it, okay? It is the difference between a D and a C. So this first section, you're going to use EasyBib to format the citations correctly, okay? So it's telling you right here, the medium, which is a book, okay? The authors are Henry Goldman and Elizabeth Howard. The book is called Ancient Civilizations and where it was published is Philadelphia. The publisher is Gold House and the year is 1989. So if we go back to this, okay, we're gonna hit create citation. We're gonna hit book. And then we're gonna hit create manual citation because no ISBN number was provided for us, okay? So we have Henry oops, Golding. You can tell I've done this before. Okay, and what was the other, what was her name? His name, Elizabeth Howard. Okay, Elizabeth. Now this is also important to pay attention to. This is a book with two authors, okay? So your first author will be last name comma first name then you'll write and, and then first name, last name for that second author, okay? That is on your quiz. Source title, Ancient Civilizations, okay? It was 1989, good year, and it was published by Gold House, okay? You'll notice that there is no publication city because MLA 8 did away with that, okay? You'll hit complete citation. And there it is. Okay, that's why you would copy and paste or transcribe, okay? Golding Henry and Elizabeth Howard, Ancient Civilizations. Now, if you are handwriting and for whatever reason you can't write in cursive, you will then underline it to show that it is a book, okay? Okay, good, glad we went over that, okay? This one here, number five, gets a little funky because it's a YouTube video, so make sure you click video. This one is an article Okay, it is from a collection. Okay, so when you go to do that, we're gonna hit citation. Okay, it is most likely going to be um, a journal. Okay, because it gives you, where does it go? Okay, and it gives you an editor. So these are things that, this is your author, this person, Joshua Smith, but the, this is your editor. So both of those names would be included in your citation, okay? Um, this would be a video, right? Section two, you're just going to tell me what's what, okay? It is pretty straightforward, all right? Um, section four, however, there is no attached sample paper. So I do apologize. Um, this first one goes over that first page, which is um, towards the end of the MLA documentation bootcamp. Okay. What things are going in the upper right? Okay. All of, answering this whole packet really should help you with your quiz. Um, you could probably use this as well for your quiz and then just answering these questions as well. Okay. I know it's a lot, but I promise you it will help. Um, anyway, I think that's about it. I think I'm going to end the torture of MLA there. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, I think that's it. I think so. Okay. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your week. And good luck on the quiz this Friday. Bye, guys.